from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Right up front here on our program, I just want to say that this is a very, very special time of the year. And so we're going to be doing something that we've never done before, and that is to think about Thanksgiving a little bit differently on this program than we've ever done. So many people have come to Jack and they have said, oh, we'd like to know more about you, uh, Jack, and your ministry. And so today, we're going to give thanks to the Lord for all he's done in the ministry and in Jack's life. And as his partner, I also am grateful to the Lord for what he's done. Now, I want to ask Jack a question right up front. Is Thanksgiving really found in the Bible? Now, we call him the walking Bible. He's memorized so many verses. Is Thanksgiving, Jack, found in the Bible? First Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And Rexella, I'm so glad about the salvation that is given to us. It's a gift. What? That's right. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. And the Apostle Paul in Romans 6, 23 said, The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And added in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And that's our precious Lord Jesus. Amen. I'll amen. say amen to that, won't you? That's The thing that I thank God for the most is the joy of knowing that I have Jesus in my heart. He's my Savior. Savior. We'll talk about that a little bit later also. But I also want to say thank you, Lord, that I live in the United States of America. We have the freedom to worship Him, the freedom to have Thanksgiving. What a wonderful country. After being in 50 countries, you can thank the Lord. You may not you? like this, but Psalm 33, 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And that's Yahweh, no other God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the second member of the Trinity, who also is God. The Bible says so plainly in Romans 9, 5, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. First Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of Godliness, that God, the Lord Jesus, was manifest in the flesh. We believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God in our eternal life. And America was built on that premise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew 20 and 19, and we make no apologies for it as other groups have come in and tried to load their God on us. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's Yahweh and the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessed comforter, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love that, don't you? Now I'm going to present to you something we've never done before, and that has to do with Jack's background. He's from an ethnic background, of course, and uh, his parents are from Belgium. There you see them, Oscar and Louise Van Impe. Let's go back in Jack's life now. There he is. I think you were five years old. I'm the there, little Jack. one. Yeah, the little <laughs> one. There's your dad. And uh, you were playing the accordion at age five, I yes, believe. Yes, at eight, eight, playing in the nightclubs with my All father. All right, there you go. And here he is. Isn't he a darling little boy? I love that. Amen. You were handsome. <laughs> handsome. Well, let me just uh, have my family in here also. Rex and Esther Shelton. And there they are. How I thank God for a godly mother and father. Going on, whoa, I, of course you know who I am right there on the left, my brother Bob, and uh, the tall one, and Donnie, the little guy there. The little troublemaker. <laughs> and I was praying so much, of starting very young. Now, you know, I was reading a godly home, so my mom taught me to pray every night before I go to bed. Well, wait, Rexella, yes. don't forget, you saw that little eight-year-old boy, me, and you started praying after you saw me All at right. that age. All right. So it was meant to be. <laughs> I'm going to go on here. Here I am, age 14, and my father, my mother, my brother Bob, and my brother Don. And how grateful I am. I love them all so very, very much. What a great, great family. Now I'm going to back up a little bit here. 
As I mentioned, I was reared in a very godly home. Age five, I started singing in our church. And of course, both of my brothers started performing in the church also. My dad, a trustee, my mother just, oh, what a wonderful, godly example. But Jack was reared in a nightclub home. And Jack, I think it would be great right now if you could tell what happened as you were reared in that nightclub home. My father had me playing the accordion by the age of eight, and he would feature me at the nightclubs uh, maybe once every couple months. And of course, that wasn't legal because of my age. And I grew up in a Belgian home where I could drink at the table. And I drank from my father's own liquor at the nightclubs many times before the whole family turned over the leaf and came to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a change there was. And Rexella, there's only one way to be saved, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you the Romans road. This is what I've told so many, and thousands and tens of thousands have come to Christ through this. First of all, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you continue, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but oh, how Jesus the Savior loved us. And as he was there on that cross, Romans 8.32 says, God spared not his son. God the Father couldn't look at sin, and though his son did no sin, he bore every sin of every one of us from Adam until the last sinner who will ever be born here. What pain, what agony for the sinless one. But listen to me. Because of it, you can get saved. And Romans 10, 13 is the conclusion of the Romans road experience. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And one night, my alcoholic father, who claimed to be an atheist, prayed that prayer, and there was a miracle. Now, people go through all the motions, and they'll walk an aisle, and they get a religious exercise rather than experience with God. And Mark 7, 6 says, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Listen, when you get converted, God so changes your life that you act differently, live differently, walk differently, smell differently, because you don't hang around the joints anymore, and that's what happened to my father. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, behold, all the things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And when you're really saved, you're raised to newness of life. Romans 6, 4. Well, the first thing Dad did was, he went down to our cellar, got out the blackberry brandy, the muscatel wine, and all the booze, and said, son, help me, took it to the alley and smashed it. And he said, I'll never drink again. And for years, there was never a drop of liquor that went into his lips. You say, oh, it's all right for a Christian to drink. Not a born-again one. Let me tell you something right here. Why did my father get rid of the booze? Proverbs 20, verse 1, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 23, 20, be not among wine drinkers. Do you hear that? How about uh, Proverbs 23, 31? Look not on the wine when it's red, when it moves itself, fermentation. Now, I want to shock some of you. 132 times the Bible speaks about wine when it's only grape juice because grape juice was cold wine. But God says in the text I just quoted, when your grape juice turns red and ferments, don't, don't look at it. Why? Because we are to bring people to Christ and woe unto him that gives his neighbor drink. Habakkuk 2.15. Why? You might get him drunk. Now, whether you like this or not, you start drinking, oh, social drinking, and then you get drunk some night. What about it? No drunkard can enter the kingdom of heaven, 1 Corinthians 6.10 and Galatians 5.19. Beware. Satan's clever. Mm, Jack, it's so wonderful, though, isn't it? And then I got saved. Yeah. When I saw this great change in my father's life, I wanted what he had. Oh. And I never touched another drop of liquor, which was given to me at the table as a Belgian family for all these years, now over 65 years. I never will touch it again. Oh, that's so great. Well, it's wonderful to know that God will forgive anything anything if we'll just come to him. The apostle Paul was a murderer. Yeah. Look how God yeah. used him. Wonderful to know we can be forgiven. And Rick Sella, anything. even greater than that, later when we pray, when you ask for forgiveness, you get it. First John 1, 9. But he also says in Hebrews 8, 12 and 
chapter 10, verse 17, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. He not only forgives, but he forgets you ever did it. Man, that's a deal. Well, oh, that's something to be thankful yeah. for, too, isn't it? How we should be thankful for the wonderful forgiveness of God. Well, let's zero in on something, on Jack's calling. Now, when he was about 17 years old, he started uh, performing, and he went to college and university, and he, let's go to that next picture. There you see the Bible. He was enthralled with the Bible. He wanted to memorize the Bible. Then going on, the making, that's what the Bible does, of a man of God. And from the time I first heard him speak, a prophetic voice for this age, he always loved prophecy. Now, he was about 17 years old when he started out playing that accordion in churches and with Billy Graham crusades. How he, Billy Graham inspired you, didn't he, Jack? Oh, he really did. And that first night, after the service at Youth for Christ rally in London, Ontario, Canada, he said to me, if I could play the accordion like you do, I'd quit preaching. <laughs> he was always a humble man and so yeah. inspirational and in building up someone else. And it wasn't long ago that I received a letter. We're going to have it framed here from Dr. Graham. And I cried. He said, I admire your Bible knowledge. Oh, what God has done for that young accordionist. I just admire you as I listen to your programs. That really did something for me, Rick Sella. Yeah. But you say, why did you memorize the Word of God? First of all, because the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is where the victory is. John 15, 3, you are clean spiritually through the Word. That's why some of you have had such a battle. You don't take time to ever open this book here in front of the television all day long. The Bible also says that it gives you power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, Acts 1.8. I have been in over 250 debates across America. I have never lost, not because of Jack Van Hippie, not because of intellectualism, but because I had the Word of God soaked in my heart. 15,000 verses on every subject memorized. And I can grasp them immediately. and I could lick the devil's crowd or even backslidden preachers at any occasion. Why? It is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, Jeremiah 23, 29. And the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh, I wish I could tell you of some of the debates I had and, and the victories through the Lord Jesus Christ. This has been a great time, Rex Yes, it yeah. really has. Something I'm really, really grateful for. That handsome man that you just saw on the screen, I'm really happy that he prayed for a wife. You know that? I really am. And I'll go on and, well, here you see it, the tender touch. Not only did he pray for a wife, but God said it's good that a man should not be alone. I'll make him a helpmeet. And I certainly have tried to walk with him and be his helpmeet. There we are. Whoa. And this was taken not well, a while ago. And uh, we've walked together all these years serving the Lord in United Crusades and how wonderful it has been. I've enjoyed every single moment of my time with Jack, I'll tell you. Well, Jack, you know what? It's wonderful because uh, you were going in not only church crusades, but God opened a bigger door of United well, the Crusades. the first I needed a wife. Okay, I was there. <laughs> Let's not skip that. <laughs> The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, pray without ceasing. Some of you have heard me tell this because I usually do it once a year at our anniversary time, but I'm going to throw it in right now because many of you have never heard it. <laughs> and I was at the Pontiac, Michigan Youth for Christ rally with my accordion and to preach, and there was a young lady there by the name of Rexella May Shelton. And I was sitting there on the platform praying for a wife, and I heard footsteps, and I looked. Oh, it was love at first sight. That was the shortest sermon I ever preached. I wanted to take her out for a greasy burger afterward. Mm. Rex, I'll give me your hand. Come on. I want to be as romantic as ever. Oh, that was some night. I'll never forget it. But I found oh. out you were going with another fellow. The Bible says, watch and pray. How does one do that? That's an impossibility. No, it isn't. With this one, I watched. And with this, when I prayed, I followed them all over. And one <laughs> night, the Lord answered my prayer and removed him. 
oh, he's still alive. I didn't pray that drastically, but I would have. I wanted her and knew that this was God's made for me. One hot summery night here in Michigan. We were looking out the bay window, and the moon was shining brightly. And as I took her hand and took her in my arms, I said, Rex, your father said it's okay. Wilt thou? And it was so hot a night, Rex, Sella, wilt. <laughs> and here we are, and what a team God put together back then. Oh, my. I had no idea he was going to be uh, sharing all of that, but thank you, Jack. I, I do thank the Lord so very much for the wonderful opportunity to serve the Lord, to be Jack's helpmeet, and to also walk with him through this life. We've had a wonderful life together. Well, the church crusades that he was in also led to United Crusades. I'd like you to see just a few pictures of those, Jack, and it'd be greater Detroit Crusade, Michigan State Fairgrounds. And then here you see some of the other wonderful crusades that, that he had. It was across America and around America. Here's another one. My, oh, my, how grateful we are. And Benepi Crusade exceeds expectations. My, this was a great, great time. Again, the greatest religious event in memory. Now, friends, something was pre-recorded and pre-produced before this program that really explains it all. And so I'm going to ask if they would please put this wonderful pre-recording on right now. And you can just see for yourself and visit the Crusades with us right there. The sheer volume of their work is staggering. Through hundreds of crusades, banquets, and church revivals, through thousands of TV programs, and a wealth of books, audio cassettes, and videos. Through music, song, and the powerful spoken word, Jack Vanapie Ministries has become the tireless tool of the Master, bringing millions to salvation at the foot of the cross. The fascinating story of their journey to unprecedented success is also the story of the dynamic forces God uses to shape us all. It's the story of conflicts and conquests. Conflicts and conquests, but before we get to that, I just want to say how grateful I am for the experience of being in those crusades, Jack. It was marvelous. Oh, Rexella, how God brought us together as a team. And just that Hershey crusade, had 10,500 the first year and 10,600 the second year, the largest crowds in history. And everywhere we went, God packed out the buildings and we gave invitations. And do you know, folks, we had 15,000 services and now 2,100 telecasts. That's 17,100 times we appeared before crowds and gave an invitation to receive Christ 17,001 times. I'm not like these preachers today who won't say anything about people coming to Jesus. It's like a guy coming to your house to sell vacuum cleaners. He cleans the floor and walks out and says nothing about, will you buy one? Not this guy. And 10 million people attended those crusades and I'm happy to say that through that and television 2,500,000 people have come to know Jesus as a Savior but always with an invitation. Is that scriptural? Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen to the closing of the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that hear us say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come and partake of the water of life freely. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Oh, God's been so faithful, Jack. But the devil uh, really didn't uh, like what we were doing. And he tried to stop us many times. You know, you do have conflicts and conquests and walking through the valley of the shadow. I'll tell you that he attacked us many times. The one time stands out in my mind, right there it is, in Belgium. A bus came alongside our little foreign car over there right downtown, Brussels. And uh, 
the devil tried to stop us by taking our lives. And I flew out of that side right there. It was all gone. Jack, maybe you'd like to explain about that, and then we'll talk about some of the other experiences that we had also. We were just about to begin the great push for crusades across America. This was the beginning of the ministry we now have. And Satan tried to take my little sweetheart's life. And this bus came over the top of that car. Had we been wearing seat belts, we'd be dead because it would have crushed our heads. Rexella flew out of the car, and I landed on the seat. And when I came to, I found her on the pavement. And someone appeared and told me he was an angel from God. And this is a hard story to believe. And he disappeared after saying she's going to be all right. And as I held her in my arms, lying there in the streets of Brussels, Belgium, the tears were rolling down my face. And as the warm tears fell on her face, she opened her eyes and said, honey, I've just had an experience like I'll never be able to explain to people. Oh, it was so wonderful. And six weeks later in a cast, she was there at Nashville, Tennessee for a citywide crusade. And then a couple weeks later, we started the weekly telecast of this, 35 years of this. And listen to me, how Satan has worked. I've had cancer, and I've had a total of 56 treatments, plus they went in and said this will cut off nine radiation treatments if you'll have this procedure done internally. So I went for it. 65 radiation treatments, but this last one, the internal thing, brought blood poisoning. And I, one night at home, was called pulsing on the floors. And she rushed me to the hospital. I had two hours left to live, sepsis. And then I had two new knees implanted. And one night, just two years ago, on our anniversary, my blood had gone out. The ulcers were bleeding. And again, I had only a few hours left to live. And they said, he needs a new heart. No, the next day they said, he has no blood, transfusions. Satan has tried to stop us, but it won't ever happen. And listen to me, Job said in chapter 13, verse 15, yes. he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. And Revelation 2.10 says, be faithful unto death, and I'm going to be, and I'll give you a crown of life, and we'll lay those crowns at the feet of Jesus, or excel, and you're going to have more than I have. In oh, fact, I want to live in your mansion, because you are the godliest woman that's ever walked the streets oh, of this world. You're so precious. What? Be faithful unto death, and we'll lay those crowns at his feet. Revelation 4, verses 10 and 11. Are you going to have one? Oh, Jack, that uh, truly humbles me to be able to work for the Lord like we have. We've had 11 death threats in Kansas City. Some drug dealers were converted, and we had uh, to have FBI in there with us. So many, many different things have happened. Well, Rexella, 20 policemen marched in, and they said, there's a three-man plot to kill you tonight. And I said, yay, yay, yay to the folks. Folks, don't worry about it. And I said, uh, we got 20 policemen here watching every door and every entrance. And for the next three nights, people had to go through metal detectors to get to our crusade. And the FBI flew home with us. What happened yeah. that night when well, you got Well, yes. He was explaining to the audience, just relax. And now, now Rex is going to come and sing for you. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Well, God was with us, and he protected us even under that. And now, praise the Lord for our global TV ministry, our ministry today. Just take a quick look, if you will. The ministry today is around the world. Go ye into all the world. And here you see it. Here's our international headquarters. And lastly, the new form method. We've been on now for quite a while, interpreting today's news in the light of Bible prophecy, interpreting the news, how wonderful, around the world. And Jesus said we're to go into all the world, Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 15, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And we're doing it. Our agents tell us we are now the largest television ministry in the history of America and Christianity. Praise the Lord. Every single city in the world weekly, and we know of two and a half million, those are the ones who've told us how many more millions have been saved and will get saved. Pray for us. And that's why we come into your home, that you might accept the Lord. And uh, that's the only reason that we're doing what we do, so that people will open their hearts to the Lord. Would you pray that prayer now, Jack? Rex, no, this is shocking. 
This is number 17,002 for invitations. Look at me and pray it. You can be saved like so many have. Lord Jesus, thank you for this message tonight and using these people to speak to my heart. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the bloodshed. Thank you for the suffering. Thank you for your love. Jesus, I want you to save me now. And so I'm asking you personally, come into my heart, Jesus. Save me for now and for eternity. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you first steps in a new direction. Wonderful little book that help you grow in the Lord. And now, friends, I would really like for you to take a look at the promo of our brand new offer, the Prophecy Bible. Please take a look. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopee Ministries. Dr. Vanopee has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopee used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh my, it's a great gift for any, anything, a wedding for a birthday and especially for Christmas, a great offer because there are many books in here. So here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive the wonderful Prophecy Bible. Chuck? My friend, to order the Prophecy Bible, have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jock Vanapee Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jock Vanapee Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I just want to say don't put it off. This is one of the most wonderful prophecy Bibles that you could have because it does have all those extra books in here for Bible study. So there's our address. Please write to me and we will get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Write or call. I just want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving from my heart. You'll never get a busy signal on the prayer line to heaven. How thankful we should be for our wonderful God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. Be thankful. And so do we.